All right, so on this one here, this is 132. Um, what you want to do whenever you're doing any of these things is a free body diagram, okay? So, um, so let, why don't we just take a preliminary look at this. Um, so what you've got going on here is you're um, pulling back this way. And with statics, you can see that that'll be 120 kips is the word for that. It means 1,000 pounds. Now this thing's symmetrical, and you could go through a little bit more of a detailed proof, but I, I think I'll just kind of cut to the chase here, as they say. That'd be 60 kips, as with this. And then this would be 40 each, okay? We could assume that with statics. Okay. All right, so so that's where I'd start would be that. Okay, everyone good with that? All right. Now, what you're looking at here is the uh, is the pin there or whatever that is, the bolt. Okay, it's got a one inch diameter, and what you want to do next is figure out what the forces are in the bolt. And this, I think I I mentioned this earlier that on this problem, it's important that you. Uh, kind of get a free body diagram drawn. Okay. So what we've got here then is uh, 40, 40, and 40. And then pulling back the other way is 60 and 60. So that's what's going on with that bolt and that's being held in equilibrium. You notice that distributing the forces that way shows it's in equilibrium uh, both in the x direction and also if you do any sort of moments, I think those would balance out. All right, so now you've got that. Um, you've got these four points that you want to analyze, A, B, C, and D. So to analyze those, you do um, what I've mentioned here a number of times before, is you make cuts through the point you want to analyze. So this is a little bit more complicated than the ones we did in class where it's not quite so symmetrical. So you want to be kind of conscientious about how you go about analyzing this one, okay? So if you want to find what's going on at A, you would um, make that cut right there through A. And what you'll have then is the head of the bolt, which you know, we don't care so much about. But then we got where we made that cut. And what's going on there is 40 kips. And then what you've got going back this way is the shear at A. So if you go sum of Fx and set that equal to zero, you're going to have minus 40 kips plus the shear at A. So you can get the shear at A is 40 kips, otherwise known as 40,000 pounds, okay? Now, when you look at that, you might, you know, you might, I don't quite know how you would figure out if you just kind of guess at what those forces are at A, B, C, and D, you know, how, what you might come up with, but you just want to be careful about that and just be kind of uh, diligent about it. Okay, so if you want to find out what's going on at B, you make this cut here through B, and I would take the top of the bolt, okay, and what I would get in that case would be something like that. And I've got 40 going this away, and then I got 60 doing that, and then I've got the shear at B. Okay, so sum of fx is zero, and that would be minus 40 plus 60, and then as I have it drawn, minus v sub b. So v sub b will be 20 kips there, 20,000 pounds. Okay. You all know, with me there? So this is an example of that idea I've gotten across a couple of times now, that you want to, we, we deal with free body diagrams. We start by getting all the forces that act on the object. Then the, what we're really after in this class are the internal forces. And the way you find them is you make a cut through them. You take one whole side of the object or the other. You can't just pull one little force out. You can't just go into B. You cannot do this. You cannot look at B um, and say, okay, the force in B is 60 or something like that. That, that doesn't work, okay? 
because what you've done, if you pull the 60 out of there and were to say the force would be a 60, see, you've actually made two cuts. There's two internal forces there when you do that, all right? So, so the technique is to cut through the point you're interested in and take one entire side of the object or the entire, other entire side of the object. That way you're sure to include all the forces in there that you need, okay? So what I and also notice that A and B are not the same; they're different. Okay, so so that's that's something that'll happen. You might want to have a look at C and D also, and just and look at those. What we know is that the maximum this thing can handle is 60 ksi. So what you're going to want to do is identify. Um, step one is to find v max. Okay, and you want to look at v a, v b. V, C, and V sub D. You want to look at all four of them and see which one's the biggest, okay? And then step two is find tau max. And that's going to be V max over the area. Okay. So there's an example of, of this idea of free body diagrams and, and how, how you approach that and, and why it's important. So, we got any uh, questions on that? Yeah. For the area, you just do the area of the uh, Yeah, right, it's just cross-sectional area of the bolt. So that's what you want there, because that's what resists that force. You know? If it fails, it'll fail straight across that cross-sectional area. So you use the area of the bolt. Other questions on that? All right. Okay, this one is a shear strain deformation problem, very similar to what we did on page 200, so I'll probably just let you figure that one out. I don't know if there's any questions on that. You know, I showed you that shortcut formula. You can go through the long process that we did yesterday or use that shortcut formula. If you do use the shortcut formula, be sure that you're using G, not E, okay? What you want is G on that. Any questions on that bit? This next next one here is maybe a little bit trickier here. Um, we have kind of a uh, kind of device here that we're going to use to measure weights. So we're going to look at the deflection of that device and relate it to the weight that's of the person. All right, so the weight of the person is going to be a downward force on there. And then you want to go about analyzing that. Now, what's going to happen here are two things, all right? Um, now, for, I guess one thing to notice here is alloy X. If you look at the moduli there for that, it's, it, that thing is not going to deform. So alloy X, that, that bar or whatever you want to call it, will move down. But... It, um, alloy X will not change shape at all. It'll just move. What's going to deform is those rubber block, the rubber block on the top and the two on the sides. Okay, so that's one thing to realize. All right, the next thing to realize is that um, that weight down on the block on the top will push down. What's going to happen then is you're going to have the two blocks on the side are going to absorb that weight, okay? So you're gonna have W over two for the reactions. The hatching indicates where those oh, blocks on the side are, are attached, all right? So it's not gonna be W, the, the load applied to those blocks on the side will not be W, it'll be half a W, W over two. All right. So what the uh, approach on this thing is to look at the top block and consider what's going on with it. And what's going on with it is it's a block like that. And you've got W coming down. And what's going to happen to that block? Maybe I'll draw this larger just so I can show more detail.
So there's W. Now what's going to happen with this thing is it's going to get shorter, right? Because you're just pushing straight down on it. So it's going to turn into a shape like that. All right, you all, you all okay with that? That's, that's what's going to happen to that one block. It's just going to compress. If you kind of relate it to what we were doing yesterday, what, what kind of stress do we got going on there? Is that axial or shear? It's axial, right? Okay. But we got the other two blocks too, so I guess we could call this delta uh, axial. All right. Now we got the other two blocks as well. So there's something like that. There's two of them. All right, now what's going on with those is you've got these forces coming up, and that's W over 2. These are the reactive forces. So, of course, the applied forces are half of that. I mean, not half of it, but that's they're equal to the reactions. And what's going to happen to these things? They're going to kind of go down like that, aren't they? Something like that. So what kind of delta do we got there? Shear. Yeah, shear, all right. Okay. So what we got right here is delta that's caused by an axial stress. And then what we got on the other two is delta that's caused by a shear stress. So it's not um, anything really complicated in combining these. What you do, you just define delta total. It's going to be delta axial plus delta shear. Okay. So, you know, there's no other fancy effects going on there. You just want to find the delta for each part and then sum them together, and that will get you the total. Okay. So, so that's the basic approach on that. So, so we good with that? We got any questions on what's happening there? Okay, you're going to add those two things together and get the total. All right, now, um, so what we're going to do here then is we're going to say delta total is equal to delta axial plus delta shear. So delta total is going to be what? PL over AE plus VL over AG. You okay with that? And then you should be able to work on through that. Now, this is a scale, basically. So the idea here is we're going to measure delta and then relate that to what the weight is. So, you know, you'd want to uh, get that kind of figured out here. Um, let's see. So what I got when I work through this is delta total ends up equaling um, 0 0.000. 283 times the weight. Okay. And then what that means, you really want to turn it around. So the weight is uh, 3534 times delta.
Okay. Something like that. You all okay with that? Any, uh, any questions on that? So, uh, so that's that one. So that's just a combination of the two. You just want to be able to kind of visualize what's going on there. One thing is the split in the weight. And the other is the fact that uh, total delta is just the sum of the delta on the block on the top, which is axial, PL over AE, plus the delta of the blocks on the side, which is VL over AG. Okay. All right. Last one is uh, kind of a net deformation kind of thing. Um, okay, what you want to do on this one, this is 160 or 152? 152. Yeah, it's 152. Um, so what you want to do on this one, again, this is all based on finding the internal forces. So you want to, uh, I usually get start off by getting the reactions. So if you've got 8, 12, and 6 pushing those different directions, you can get RA, which is 2 kilonewtons to the right. So that's 2,000 newtons. Okay. Then what you would do would be to start cutting those free body diagrams through the points you want to find the stresses in, which what I just did right there was, was that. So I've got 2,000 newtons pushing to the right, and I've got that internal force in AB pushing to the left. So that comes out to be... 2,000, and then, I don't think that's tension. That looks a lot more like compression to me, so it looks like I got an error right there, but I think it all comes out. I think it's just a typo. Okay. There we go. So that's compression. All right. See, what's going on there is I assumed it's going to the left. My answer came out positive, so the positive answer means it does go to the left, and that's compression. So that's compression there. Okay. All right. And then you'd want to be doing the same thing for the others, for uh, B, C, and C, D. And then what you do is you just run that basic formula that delta is P, L over A, E. So I just like to do these in a table and just get everything organized there. So I've got P in newtons, L in meters, the area in square meters, just pi r squared. I give you the diameters of the shaft at those different locations and then e is newtons per meter squared so notice i'm in standard units there so my answers will come out in meters okay so what i get when i do that i'm going to have to do this three times once for a b once for b c once for c d is negative 0 0.001023 positive 0 0.005002 and negative 0 0.009452 those are my deltas. Now what that is, is the delta of each section. Okay, so to get the delta of a point, you start at your reference, which is over here. And then work your way across. So you can get um, delta B it's just the answer you calculate, the negative 0 0.001023 when you run the PL over AE. Negative because it's compression. So what's happening is this one's shortening up a bit. It's getting shorter. Not nearly this much, of course, but it's getting shorter. Um, then what's happening is the other one is getting longer. Okay, you'll notice the other one's in tension. So it gets longer, and then the last one gets shorter again, okay? So what you're doing is you're adding up these cumulative effects as you work your way from A to the right to D. So you can get B first, 
and then you can get C, which is the sum of A and B, or excuse me, A, B, and B, C. And then you get D, which is the sum of A, B, B, C, and C, D. Okay? And you're just accumulating these deltas. Okay? So you just kind of sum them up as you work from your reference point to the right. We're doing all right with that. We got any questions on that bit? So that's a bit of a run through that stuff. Let's do tomorrow. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. All right, um, let's um, kind of move on then if we're good with that. So that stuff's due tomorrow. Okay, what we're going to do next here is stuff that's statically indeterminate. Okay. So, um, you know, you've all had statics and gone through that, and you probably know a few things about that now. Um, so let's, uh, let's see if we can go beyond statics. The statics is limited. You can only solve for so many unknowns when you're doing statics. You, 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 you know, you've got a limit on how much you can solve. So I'm on page 220. That's where I'm at. All right, so the limits on statics is if you've got a one-dimensional problem, you can solve for one unknown. If you've got a two-dimensional problem, you can solve for three unknowns. And if you got a three-dimensional problem, you can solve for um, six unknowns. Okay. So that's what you can do with statics. Now, often in engineering, you, you go beyond that. So we need some, some approaches here where we can go beyond just statics. So if you look at these concrete piers that are holding up that elevated roadway there, They've got concrete, but concrete always has steel reinforcing in it if it's done in any sort of serious way for structural support. So what you've got for this, these piers, if you just look at them supporting weight, there's going to be a load down, and of course they're going to push up. But if you want to know the force in the concrete and the force in the steel, you can't get it with just statics. I mean, you know the reaction on that concrete pier equals the weight pushing down but you're not going to know how much goes into the concrete and how much goes into the steel. So you have to go beyond just statics to, to get that figured out. Okay. So statics is kind of the starting point and we use that quite a bit, but we got to go beyond that to get, do more advanced problems. And this is kind of step one using strength of materials. There's actually some really advanced methods using energy analysis where you look at the deformation of the material and relate that to the energy absorbed by it. And that's kind of, what you end up doing um, in, in civil engineering, you probably will get into that um, approach. Okay. That'll be a junior kind of thing. Okay, so the idea here is statically ind indeterminate problems cannot be solved using statics alone. So that problem, you can't find the force in the concrete, the force in the steel with statics. You've got to go beyond. Okay, and the first step in going beyond is to use strength of materials deformation. Okay, and this can help us solve statically indeterminate problems. So I've got a concrete and steel problem there on page 220. So what I've got there is a, uh, a pier, okay, just a little block there that's going to support a load. And it's made by taking tube steel, 18 inch by 18 inch. Uh, it's an inch thick. Common way to make uh, tubes is you, you take a sheet of steel and bend it so that it uh, so that it uh, fits everything, okay?
Okay. Um, all right. So we've got a, a, a square tube there of steel, and often on these columns, they'll stiffen them up. They'll put uh, grout in them. They'll pour uh, concrete into them to stiffen them up. So if we apply this load to this little pier, let's figure out how much of the load is carried by the uh, concrete and how much by the steel, and let's see how much it'll deform downwards, too, if we can. All right. All right, so we, we always want to start these off by just doing some basic kind of stuff here. I'd like to find the area of the concrete and the area of the steel. Um, so what I've got there is the concrete. See, that steel is made out of a plate that's an inch thick. Um, so that'll take two inches off of that 18, an inch on either side. So I've got a, a square area of concrete, 16 by 16, which is 256 inches squared. Okay. Now, the area of the steel is that total area, 18 by 18. Take away the area of the concrete, you get 68. Okay. So that, that's what I'm doing there, just working through it in that fashion. So that gets me the areas. You know, I've got the uh, allowable stresses there for steel and concrete, and I've got the moduli there for steel and concrete too. All right, now the first thing I would do on these type, kind of problems is run some statics. And so we'll just go sum of FY, set it equal to zero, and that's going to get us a pretty obvious conclusion here um, that we get the load in the steel plus the load in the concrete. When you add them up, you get 70,000. That's what's pushing down. We're going to assume that that 70,000 gets spread out between all the materials evenly, too. Okay. All right. So, so there we go. So the, the, the statics is equation number one. You always want to run statics and kind of get, you know, kind of a baseline, and that's what we got there. So I, I express that as a load in the concrete is 70,000 minus whatever the load in the steel is. All right. Now, that, that's one equation with two unknowns, though. So we need another equation. And see what we're going to do here is we're going to use strength of materials. And what we know is that delta for the steel is equal to delta for the concrete. And what that is is PL over AE. See, so by knowing material properties, that allows us to relate uh, deformations and strains to loads and stresses is what it does. Okay? So if you know the material, the property, you can you can look at how much something deforms and relate that to what the force in it is. That, that's that's kind of a big thing that we do in this class. And on this one, we're just pushing down on a pier. They're both going to deform the same amount, so that one's pretty pretty straight up. So um, did I write all this stuff out for you on your handout or no? I didn't. Did I? Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, let's let's have a look at it then. All right. So what we know here is that the load in the steel is seventy thousand minus the load in the concrete, and the load in the concrete is seventy thousand minus the load in the steel. I can express it either way, and then with the strengths, I know that delta times the load in the uh, or delta steel is delta concrete. They both have the same delta. Okay. So I'm right, uh, right there. Now, of course, I know what, I, at least I don't know everything, but I know a few things about PL over AE for both materials. I've got P, A, and E. And, excuse me, I got L, A, and E. The load is what I don't know, but I know everything else. So what I can do then is I can say the load of the steel times its 30-inch length divided by its area, divided by its E, is equal to the load in the concrete times its 30-inch length, divided by its area, and divided by its E. Okay, Those are the deltas. And I know the deltas are equal, so those two expressions are equal. And then I can just work through those. Okay, So when I do that, I get 0 0.0152 times the load in the steel is 0.0651 times the load in the concrete. And then I can either divide through by 0 0.0152 or by 0 0.0651. I can do it either way. 
And if I divide through by 0.0152, I'll get the load in the steel is 4.28 times the load in the concrete. And if I divide through by 0.0651, I get the load in the concrete is 0.234 times the load in the steel. If I'm actually solving this, I don't have to run it both ways. I'm just showing you how you, know, how you can do it either way. That's all. Okay. So by using the delta stuff, I'm getting a relationship between the loads. And that's the second equation for the two unknowns. See? So that's equation number two. So now I can go ahead and work the two equations together. And I can go ahead and find what these loads are, OK? So I know that the load in the concrete is 70,000 minus the load in the steel. And if I take that times 4.28, I'll get the load in the steel. Similarly, I know that the load in the steel is 70,000 minus the load in the concrete. And that's 0.234 times the load in, or excuse me, the load in the concrete is 0.234 times the load in the steel. Okay. So I can work through those now, because now I got on either side, I got one equation, one unknown. I can solve for the load in the steel, it's 56,742. And I can solve for the load in the concrete, and that's 13,258. Okay. And when I add those together as a check, I get 70,000. So that all works out. Okay. Pretty good. So the deal on this one is that um, you can um, use this delta as PL over AE. If you can relate the two deltas together for the two materials, you can use that to solve. That's the idea. Okay. So now I know if I load that pier up, as I just showed there, I know how much of that load will go into the concrete and how much will go into the steel. If I push down with 70,000, the steel is going to push back up with 56,742, and the concrete will push back up with 13,258. Okay. So that's how that load gets distributed between the two materials. All right, now once I got that, I can go ahead and I can find the stresses and compare them to those allowable stresses, and I can find the deltas. Okay. So this load gets distributed out based on the length, the area, and the modulus. Okay. That, that's what determines how those loads get distributed between the two materials. Okay, so I can go ahead and then find the uh, stresses, just divide through by the areas. That'll get me the stresses. So 834 for the steel, 51.8 for the concrete. Those are both well within allowable limits. And then I can check my deltas, PL over AE. So I'm using the uh, load in each material. And I get the same delta, and that's a good thing. I mean, I should, because I set those deltas are equal originally. To see what was going on. You see, it's not a whole lot of delta in there. You know, it's not a whole lot of deformation. But all the same, we can use it to run through this process. So, we're doing all right with that. So that's a straightforward example. You're just pushing on the thing, and they both deform the same amount. Now, like things do, these can get trickier. Um, you know, that's just kind of how, how things are. But. Doing all right with that? Now the next one, we got a little bit trickier situation. We've got a hydraulic press pushing down on three posts. The posts have different lengths. There's also a little bit of a gap in there, or a little bit of an extension on that press. So that's going to make the deltas 
a little trickier getting those figured out. Okay. All right, so this is again statically indeterminate. Here's a, if we model this in 2D, we've got this weight coming down like so, and then we got three posts pushing back. See, that's statically indeterminate. That's a, um, you know, you could, you got two equations you can use on that. Some of Fy is zero and some of moments is zero, but that's it. I mean, now there might be some ways you could kind of figure this out and I might take some approaches to do that, but, but let me show you kind of the, the analytical sort of way of doing this, all right? So what we got here is we've got not a gas station uh, awning there, but we've got a hydraulic press. We got it's going to push down on three posts. All right, and I think this one I got partially filled in for you. So I went ahead and found the areas of the posts right there and there. The A, B, and E, F are symmetrical. C, D is longer. We've also got that little bit of an extension on the press. So let's figure out the forces and the deltas here, okay? All right, now when I'm doing this, I start with statics. So I'm just going to go sum of Fy and set that equal to zero. So that looks an awful lot like negative 320,000 plus PAB plus PCD plus PEF, okay? So those three added together equal to 320,000. And then I'm also going to take a moment about C and set that equal to zero. So I'm just doing all the statics I can just to kind of get as lined out on that as I can. Statics is usually a little simpler, and I want to start with that to get my basic relationships figured out. So what I've got there is that the sum of the three loads is 320,000. Okay. And also, if I take moments about C, being as A, B, and E, F are symmetrical about C, their forces are going to be equal. So I know that PAB equals PEF, and I know that PAB plus PCD plus PEF is 320,000. That, that's, that's kind of my baseline information that I start with. Okay. Now, once again, I want to go with some strengths here. And I'm going to, to do that, you relate the deltas together. So this is kind of a standard drill on this, okay? Do the statics first and then relate the strengths to it. And what I know is delta is PL over AE. So that, that's kind of my, the stuff I work with. Now the thing is on this one, I'm going to have to figure out some stuff about delta. Okay. Now, if you look at that picture, delta AB is less than delta CD because you got that extension on the press. That's going to push down CD 2.1 centimeters more than it will AB or EF. So to get an equal equality there, what I got to do is I got to add 0.021 to delta AB. So delta AB plus 0.021 meters is delta CD. Because delta CD is 2.1 centimeters greater than delta AB. That, that's what's going on there. Okay. Now the other bit is pretty much the same. It's, um, PA, it's P, PL over AE to get the deltas. Okay. So PAB times its length of 1.2 meters divided by its area that I calculated up above divided by E, which is given, 780 megapascals. That'll get you delta AB plus the 0.021, and that'll equal delta CD. And delta CD is the load in CD times its 1.8 meter length divided by 0.01131 meters squared divided by 780 times 10 to the 6. Okay. So I end up with this equation here. I don't like equations like that. I got all those exponents and stuff. So what I do, I pick out the smallest one 
which is 0.204 times 10 to the minus 6, and I just divide everything by it. That'll clear that fraction. That'll get me into a little bit more usable form of the equation, at least from my perspective, and I can work with it easier. So that's why I'm doing that. And so I clear the fraction on the right, so I just get PCD. So I got 0 0.3061 times 10 to the minus 6, and I divide it by 0.204 times 10 to the minus 6. I get 1.5 PAB. And if I take the 0.021 divided by 0 0.204 uh, times 10 to the minus 6, I get 102,941. So there's my equation number 3. So I just did a bit more strengths, a little bit trickier here because I got this little difference in the deltas right there. Got to include that. So there's, you know, if, if the deltas equal each other, they're pretty simple to do. Sometimes you have to analyze the relationship if they're not, okay, and, and come up with some expression to relate the deltas together. However you do it, you want to relate the deltas together is what you want to do. Okay. Now I know that uh, PAB plus, um, let's see, PCD, and PCD is one and a half PAB plus 102,941. So what that is, that's PCD right there. And then plus PEF, but PEF and PAB are the same. So what I, when I plug everything in, I get one equation with one unknown and I can solve for PAB. Okay. So PAB plus 1.5 PAB plus 102,941 plus PAB is 320,000. Collect terms, I get 3.5 PAB plus 102,941 is 320,000. Okay. All right, and I can just go ahead and solve that out, and I'll get PAB is 62,017. Okay. And that's PEF also. They're equal. Okay. So this one's a little bit trickier. It's got a little bit more steps, but it's the same idea. I start off with statics. Then I incorporate my delta as PL over AE relationship from strengths and, and equate the deltas together. Okay. And so I got PAB and PEF. What I can do next is divide out the areas. And I can get the stress in AB and EF. And I can do the same thing there um, once I find PCD. If I know PAB and PEF, they're equal. I can find PCD, that's 195, 966. Okay. So what I can do with that is I can... Um, find the stress in CD also, and then I can find the deltas, okay? Once I got all the forces, the rest of it's pretty straightforward. All right. So the stress in CD is just the force divided by the area. It's a 17.3 megapascals. And then I can go ahead and solve for each of the deltas. Uh, the deltas are PL over AE, okay? And they come out to be 0.019 and 0.04, which is good because I got 4 centimeters for delta CD and 1.9 centimeters for delta AB. And I know they're 2.1 centimeters different. And so that, that works just fine. That checks out. So finding all those deltas often serves as a check on your work just to you know be sure that you, uh, you don't have any errors in there, okay? So, um, so we're doing all right with that. This stuff's got a lot of calcs in it, you know, and and you want to just take your time on those, you know, don't don't drop numbers, you know, or do the best you can with it. I mean, we all make errors and all that, but you know, this is this class has a lot of really detailed calculations in it, and and we want to learn how to do that because when you start working, you can spend a you know, I think I've mentioned I spent a week once just in the office calculating a road intersection that was about the size of this room, all the grades and making sure everything fit and worked. It was a really tricky one. Um, and you didn't want to make a mistake on Monday when you're doing that because it'll show up on Friday and that causes lots of problems. So, you know, 
part of what you want to learn here in school is, is reducing the errors you make. Okay? So just work through it systematically, nice and easy. Right? And ch get checks on your work and all that. And that, that'll serve you well when you start working. These projects get kind of tricky sometimes. Um, now, I'll get you a couple of these to do, 161 and 163. Um, maybe we make those due Monday, which is the 15th. Now, let's have a look at those. I think I've got them written up, but they're on page 7. Yeah, I've got both of them written up for you, I think, on 7A and B. But let's, let's look at page 7 in your book. Let's look at 162, which I didn't even write down here. I wrote down the wrong number, 162, not 163, 162. Here we go. So 162. And let's just, uh, so that's not 163, just in case you wrote down 163. Okay, I screwed that up. It's 162. Um, so let's have a look at that. And let's apply a little bit of practical mathematics here like we like to do. So some practical geometry, which is a helpful thing to know when you start working and all that. So we've got this big heavy bar. It's not going to deform. Now it's going to rotate about A, but the bar itself won't bend or flex or anything. Okay. So what's going to happen when we apply that load at D is that thing's going to rotate about A and stretch out those two smaller bars, B, E, and C, F. So what's going to happen is something like what I'm showing here. A, B, C is going to rotate about A. And in so doing, we're going to get a delta B and a delta C, which are going to be different, aren't they? And C, we're going to need to relate those together. And the way you relate those together is you realize for small angles up to five degrees or more, you can pretty much approximate a rotation like that with starting horizontal and then rotating down like I'm showing, you can approximate that like a right triangle is what you can do. And that'll work pretty well. I've done that surveying before and that'll, that, that works pretty well. Okay, even though it's not a perfect model, it's pretty darn close. So what you can do is you can relate uh, delta B to delta C using uh, similar triangles is what you can do, okay? Because you got two right triangles in there, and you should be able to relate those deltas together um, by using similar triangles. So that's kind of the trick to get your delta uh, B relating to delta C when you set that up with PL over AE. Okay. All right, so 161 and 162, those are due uh, Monday. All right, well, there we go.